Hello, hello everybody and welcome. This is Give Your Anxiety ca Casting and I'm going to be bringing you a very good best of seven series. Uh, this is the Age of Empires Online Zuda Zuda Classic Tournament and this is the finals of the winner bracket between CG Eerie and, C and uh, the Mista. CG Eerie versus Mista. CG Eerie is playing as the Celts down low and Mista is playing as the Egyptians up top playing on equal footing. This is game one of the best of seven. And um, and this is going to be a very exciting series right here. So, um, Eerie is going on his hunt. He's uh, using all of his villagers to build the storehouse on hunt. And he's also building a storehouse on his woodline. Um, he's not afraid of an Egyptian rush, so he's going for that storehouse on the woodline right away. And uh, the Mista is actually making storehouse on his woodline, so he's, he's not gathering from the really close trees to get a really early barracks. Um, so he's not too worried about a super early rush. And uh, and he's using his Priestess of Ra to empower his food storehouse. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, oh yes, I was going to say, this is, so this is the finals of the winner's bracket. This is not the grand finals. Um, the loser of this series will then move on to, move to the loser's bracket and you know and then the winner of the loser's bracket plays the winner of this series um, but they this is you know regard saying that they are both still very far in this tournament and um, so yeah we two very good players and this is gonna be a very exciting best of seven series so Eerie is not going for age one barracks he's building two houses already usually in age one person line you see age one barracks is almost like every game um, but we're not seeing it this game, and uh, Egyptian is a sieve that doesn't have a good age one rush, but the Celts do have a very good age one rush. So a little interesting to see no barracks is in age one, and uh, the Mist is already building a storehouse on his stone mine and on his berries. It's very nice. He got a little two for one storehouse, where it's a perfect storehouse for a stone mine, but it also acts as a perfect storehouse for these berries. So it's always nice when you can get that. And the Celts are a pretty unique sieve. They're, in order for them to advance to age 2, it only costs 300 food, but it requires them to build 3 houses in age 1 to advance. So, um, very unique. They're the, they're the only sieve that is like that. Um, it's really nice though, because it's 300 food instead of like 200 food, 200 wood, and you get the population from the houses. So, um, And the Egyptians, they actually age up by building uh, temples to for each age. So you have to build a temple of Ra to advance to age 2 which allows your town center to continue making villagers while you're aging. <clears throat> so these two civs have uh, you know, kind of unique age ups. And uh, Eerie's now on his way to age 2. He is gathering stone uh, from his stone mine here. So we're going to see both players going for an early age 2 town center, which is very standard play. <clears throat> Let's take a look at the resources here. We do have some hippos over here for the Mesa. Um, otherwise, there's not ton it well there's some deer over here um and uh yeah some some hippos so this is equal footing but even though you might play be playing on equal footing every time but sometimes the uh the resources aren't always exactly the same like some equal footings can have more hunt than other equal footings so it's it's interesting and you don't always have hippos on uh, equal footing but on this one you do have hippos and it doesn't look like there's any herdable animals. A lot of times you'd see goats or cows, but uh, there are no goats or cows this time, so there's less food in that sense. And here we go. Mister is now building his second uh, town center, and he's using his priestess of rods to empower that, so it's going to be building quicker. And he's building it uh, pretty defensively, right on top of his gold mine. Um, so it looks like he might be playing defensively. And as soon as he did get H2, he did train another priestess of Ra, so he does have his two priestess of Ra's. And uh, here we go, Eerie is actually building his TC a bit forward. Um, interesting location, it's, it, it is on top of these two hunts, so um, I guess this is pretty good. It, it will act as a pretty good storehouse for this hunt, but then it's a little bit far for, for the gold mine and the trees. But it is uh, a little bit forward, so it's going to claim a bit more map control, so that's very nice. And Yuri is now building a barracks for himself, while Mist is researching handsaw and pickaxe, so he's going very economy, uh, economically focused. Let's take a look at Yuri. Uh, Yuri does have handsaw, but he's holding off on pickaxe. And very nice, you, Mister can now use his town center to attack the hippo, and the hippo goes right up to the town center, so it's gonna, 
you know, die right on top of the town center, and that's like perfect gathering. And these villagers, they're all dropping off 11 resources instead of 10 because this priestess arrives and powering the town center. And the villagers also train one second quicker, so this priestess around town center is like doing so much for him right now, especially since there's two hippos right here. That, that's huge. So Erie's now uh, building Storos on the stone mine, and Mist is building barracks himself. Let's take a look at Erie. Uh, he'd not get pickaxe, so um, he's now making long swordsmen. And uh, Eerie's now scouting around the base, trying to see what's going on here. We have a second storehouse coming down from the mist on the wood line. Uh, just uh, you know, have to replace the storehouses pretty frequently. And we don't have Picker's Glove being researched. Mista does have quite a few villagers on berries right here, and uh, he's not researching Picker's Glove. And you see, he's stacking up quite a bit of resources. So this is kind of telling me that he's going to be going for the H3. And there it is. So Mista doing a very, very fast H3. Going into H3 before training a single unit and before even a military building was finished. While Yuri is not doing that at all, he's going to be staying in H2 for quite some time. And now he's getting pickaxe. Um, and he's continuing to make long swordsmen and he's now just uh, dropped down in archer range. Ooh, oh, this is very big right here. Uh, Mr. is about to lose his priestess Rob. Very nice pickup. And Mr. having some idle villagers here also. So a very nice pickup by, I think that was even just a single long swordsman, killed one priestess of Ra. Um, so Yuri able to put on some aggression there, very nice. And he is researching Picker's Glove now. And the Mist is gathering stone, so when he gets H3, he'll be able to either build his third town center or build a fortress, which will, will be a very defensive structure and allow him to make elephants. Uh, Mist is now building a stable. He actually just hit H3, but he, he's yeah, now throwing a lot of villagers on the stable. Is he's not able to uh, to make any military units. You know, he's not able to make his chariot archers, which uh, are very good H three units. <clears throat> and let's get a villager count here: thirty four vills for Erie and thirty five for uh, the Mista. And these are still regular axemen, so these long swordsmen are going to beat these axemen because it's basically their H two long swordsmen versus H two axemen, and uh, long swordsmen win in H two. But as soon as you get Axeman Champion, then it changes a lot, and they're very strong units. Um, and we're seeing Eerie now going H3 himself. And uh, Eerie's trying to pick off some of these houses. And uh, Mista getting more economy upgrades, getting Pulsar right now, so uh, investing quite a lot into... Um, into his economy here and he does have his first chariot archer out and the mister is now trying to build his TC back here and it might it does get denied so um, he is still gathering stone though so he's gonna be able to rebuild it but it does slow down that TC from getting up alright so mister is making a mixture of uh, axemen and chariot archers still regular axemen and he's now building his third town center while uh, CG Erie's now just up to age three, and he's placing his third town center down right now himself. Uh, his town center is all pretty, pretty defensive. Uh, all of their TCs are pretty close to each other here. Ooh, and here we go. A few long swordsmen are trying to uh, get a raid off, but they're getting caught here, and uh, it looks like Erie might lose all, all of these here, especially if Missa continues to, to uh, try to chase them down with the, uh, with chariot archers and the yeah, asshole. So. <clears throat> it's a small little pickup, but um, every little thing like that, um, you know, they all add up. So that was about four or five long swordsmen that got killed there. And the Eerie is now throwing down a stable himself. So uh, the Celts are pretty unique. They cannot, they have no cavalry in H2, and they can't even make a stable until they get to H3. Uh, but in H3, you can make a horseman from the stable, and it's a cavalry unit that counters. Uh, other cavalry units. And here we go. Misses has a little bit of a raiding party. Some uh, champion axemen and two chariot archers. Ooh, he's already some low HP villagers from attacking the hippo, so he's able to pick off one villager there. And let's get a villager count 49 villas for Erie to 53 for the Mista. Another stable is going down for the Mista here. 
Um, and Eerie does have some slingers, so these slingers will counter chariot archers, and he's not mixing in horsemen. He's got a very well mixed army here. And he's now putting down Sacred Grove to uh, try to... Well, he actually has a second one, so can make uh, druids and also make an auger. Ooh, Mista throwing up some watch posts, so he's trying to keep tabs and not let uh, Eerie get out for these hunt well, hunter berries or any resources out on the map here. And Mista just continuing to make this combo of uh, Champion Axemen and Chariot Archers, and it is a very strong combo. And there are still a few more villagers, really low HP. One, two villagers do go down right there, so um, Mista does lose his, his ax Champion Axemen there, but he does pick up two villagers. So we're now at 58 villagers to 63. I'm still fairly close. And uh, yep, we are seeing a Druid Maid and an Augur, and he is also making a Sacred Deer, so... Uh, this auger has an ability to to use rights, and uh, in H3 he has the right of uh, Damrama. <laughs> I'm probably saying that wrong, but it's going to reduce the training time of all of his units by 20%. So uh, you could sacrifice an animal to use the right, and that's why he's training a deer right now. So he's going to sacrifice that sacred deer, and it's going to make all of his units train 20% quicker, which is a very nice boost. Oh, and Eerie is going to lose his villagers here. Oh, not good. He's starting to lose more and more villagers, so um, that's actually kind of big, losing those villagers. We're now at 61 villagers to 72. If Yuri could get a surround, though, this could be a very big uh, battle. This is what Yuri needs, so he needs to pull back these gold villagers. Uh, if he could trap these this army from Mista, this is a very expensive army. These chariot archers are very expensive units. Um, the rest of his army is a little bit out of position as they're slower, but here we go. Uh, Yuri could get a good surround here if... Um, if he can trap these chariot archers. <clears throat> uh, we're at 62 villagers to 75, so Mister is, not, is now taking that villager lead. And uh, it, Eerie kind of struggling to get the surround here. He's going to be able to take out this watch post. And we it's interesting to see Mister use his ax, champion X-Men and chariot archers moving together. And there we go, the right is now active. So, ooh, this is uh, increases damage against buildings uh oh I wonder if he did the wrong one actually he yeah he increase he did the right of Ratis that which increases the damage of all your military units damage against buildings for all military units by 50% but he's not attacking any buildings right now so uh, might have been a little bit of a mistake I think he meant to do the one for training time all right so Mista is moving out with his uh, interesting rating force of champion axemen and shared archers and uh, but meanwhile, Yuri's pushing. He's moving in. He does have a pretty strong army here. And we're at 67 villagers to 84. So, um, Mister is ahead in, in pop supply also, though. But will Yuri be able to uh, shut down these raids, though? Ooh, this is very scary here. Champion Axeman on Woodline and a couple uh, uh, Chariot Archers. Meanwhile, Yuri is trying to push in the main base, but he's gonna have to do some serious damage if he's gonna be losing all these villagers here. And very big engagement here. Oh, still two more elephants though, and 59 villagers for Eerie and 85 to Missa. So Eerie's lost, been losing quite a few villagers in this game, and um, he's gonna have to do some real damage with this push, or he could be in a bad position. He does take out two elephants there. There's still quite a few military units in uh, in Eerie's base here, and yeah, these raids are just really rough for Eerie to deal with champion axemen and chariot archers. Um, meanwhile, Miss is kind of holding off this attack here at his home base, so Miss is actually looking really good right now. 55 villagers to 85, so now the villager difference is very large, and uh, and it's tough to come back when you're kind of that far behind the villagers. So Erie was trying to do a bit of a timing push there, um, but he just didn't wasn't able to do enough damage, and he also wasn't able to deal with the raids back at home, so. Uh, put him in a really rough position, and now we're seeing Erie at 85 population only, while Misses max out at about 180. Um, so this game very quickly turned to Misses' favor. Uh, looked, you know, pretty even the entire game, and then just one kind of big push uh, really changed the tide of this game significantly. And now Erie's low on gold. His a lot of villagers are idled here, not gathering, and he's struggling to make units right now.
And we've seen, uh, if you take a look at Erie's resources, they're very off right now. He's got 2,000 wood, and, but struggling to gather any gold is he had to pull all of his villagers off of gold mines. Um, he's trying to get some some uh, military going, but uh, Missa with the uh, significant lead right now. 88 villagers to 60 villagers. And a couple elephants in CG Yuri's woodline right now. And here we go, we do have a big engagement. Uh, Yuri is catching some of these units here, so he's uh, picking off some military units, trying to claw himself back into this game. But meanwhile, there's another elephant over here with some more chariot archers. And we're at 46 villagers to 87, so very quickly the villager difference is uh, just becoming significant. And uh, Eerie's struggling here. Uh, losing his entire army pretty much here. While well, Mrs. is just able to do whatever he wants. Wow, look at this little farm. These farms. Interesting. Actually, not not, not even the, the best uh, built farms. Usually, you build them more in your woodline where the storehouses are a lot closer. But uh, meet, but regardless, Mrs. is a significant advantage right now in the game. Even building fortresses out on the map. Now uh, making forward siege workshops. And there's a GG. Eerie just seen he has no resources and there's just nothing he can do. Um, GG, well played in that one. Uh, kind of unique game. It, very quickly, there's just one big engagement where Eerie tried to do a timing push, um, but the timing push didn't work, and he had a really slow and mobile army. And his entire army, it wasn't large enough to do a, a strong enough timing push, and and then he wasn't able to deal with the raids back at home. So he got caught out of position really far, and, and just very quickly... Uh, Turn the tide of the game there. And as you see, you're just losing lots of villagers throughout the, uh, well, yeah, throughout the game here. To all these raids. So, Mista does take game one here. Alright, so loser of game one picks the map for game two, and these players cannot play the same exact the same save in back back games. So um alright, Erie chooses Arabia. And uh we're gonna be getting into game two here pretty soon. Alright, so they choose, uh, Erie does choose Arabia for game two. Uh, so, what are your guys' predictions here going into game two?
All right, so very interesting. We're gonna see a Persia mirror on Arabia. And here we go. We are getting into game two right away. Um, so there was a recent patch, <clears throat> a recent balance patch. Which did make paid labor a little bit worse. Uh, it's been a popular strategy lately. <clears throat> um, it's where Persians can go to age 3 and get a upgrade. That's It's actually a free upgrade. And it makes your villagers train in 8 seconds instead of 15 seconds. But it changes their cost to 40 gold and 10 food instead of 50 food. Um, and a lot of people have been doing it to... to you know, get a really strong economy and just boom off of it. Um, and people and balance team decided that it was a little bit too strong. So in the latest patch, they made it a little bit worse. Uh, just where um, the training time is nerfed a little bit. They they just take a little bit longer to train. So instead of eight seconds, it, I believe it's like uh, off to look. But it, I believe it's like ten seconds or something like that. It's a slight nerf, um, but. Still very strong, and uh, they, we are playing on Arabia, so this is a very large map, uh, one of the largest maps in the game. So there's a very good chance that we can still see paid labor uh, being used in this game. And uh, this is a Persian mirror also, so. Alright, so Eerie is up top, playing as a Persian. He's researching Pickers Glove, built a storehouse on his berries, and a very nice 2 for 1 storehouse. It will also work for, on, for this gold mine. And he has a storehouse on his wood line here. Let's take a look at Mist's base. Uh, Mista uh, did build a storehouse on his berries, but he did not research Picker's Glove, so uh, there are goats on the map here also, so um, sometimes you can go out for a far hunt also, but uh, they're deciding to go for the berries right here. Now Mista is researching Picker's Glove, so he was maybe trying to find a hunt first and go out for the hunt, uh, but he didn't find any close hunts, so he delayed his Picker's Glove research a bit, um, and then ended up getting it, so here he has a nice little boost there where his Picker's Glove did finish earlier and now both players are building a storehouse on stone mine so it looks like they're both gonna be going for very fast h2 town center uh, no real tricky play this game uh, as I said this is a very large map so you know makes a lot of sense to build that t second TC as soon as you get to h2 And let's take a look at the entrances for each player's base. So the Mista, there, there's a cliff here, and uh, units can enter right here. And then also over here, there's an entrance, and then some more entrances over here. Let's take a look at Erie. Uh, this cliff is closed off here, but it is a very large opening right here. Ooh, Mista looks like he's going to have a little bit of idle TC time, but he does want to do 14 villager rage up. Uh, does have, did have a little bit of idle TC time, though. And uh, Eerie also doing a 14 villager rage up. So these player, players are both mirroring each other right now. Ooh, got sheep crossing sheep right now. you has got to remember to bring these two uh, goats back home. Alright, so where are these players going to be looking to build their second town center? That'll be, uh, see if they're going to go very defensive or if they're going to try to get out on the map a bit. We missed up forgetting to queue up a villager here actually. Had a little bit of idle TC time. Not the biggest deal, but it's definitely not something you want to do in finals, uh, even just a second or two there. A little bit of a slip up. And uh, Mr. Does Play Sounds, second town center right here. Very good location. Uh, right on top of berries, on top of a stone, man, stone mine, and on top of some uh, a little bit of wood line. So very good location. And Erie uh, building his pretty similar location on top of berries and wood line. No stone mine. Uh, Mister is now researching handsaw, so is Eerie, so very mirrored builds right now. Uh, Mister has four goats. Let's take a look at Eerie. He's got two goats right now, and two more. You gotta remember to bring these guys home, though. So, very similar openings right now. 
And it'll be interesting to see if they go for uh, fast H3 right away or if they, you know, go to place the stable down in H2. And here we go. We are seeing a stable. So Mista is starting to build a stable and uh, kind of a little bit forward, you know, it's not right back at home. So uh, Zeus will be able to get into the action a little bit quicker. Ooh, and I think here might have still two, two goats here. Always nice when you can steal some goats from... Ooh, and Mista doing the same right now. Going underneath the town center actually and pulling both of them back. So, um, yeah, ghosts can be important. Don't, you know, uh, underestimate them. They contain 100 food each, so... And you can gather them right on top of your town center, so it makes for very efficient gathering. Um, and see, no pickaxe. And Mista is also building another stable now. And Eerie just now getting his first stable up. And the first S bar is in Q now for both of them. There are still a lot of sheep. Sheep are crossing sheep once again. The, the, the battle of the or the goats, I should say. The battle of the goats. Uh, so it looks like Eerie's still sitting on his one stable. Uh, he is not researching pickaxe. He's floating quite a bit of wood. Uh, interesting to see him not place down a second military building. Looks like he might want to be going H3 instead. Um, and they're actually both not getting pickaxe, so they both held off on pickaxe for a little bit and then decided to get it. Mista trying to steal these goats once again. Uh, Eerie is now rebuilding another storehouse. His wood line is starting to get a little bit far, so uh, very good. And always want to keep rebuilding those storehouses so your villagers aren't walking too far. And, uh, oh, we do have the first S bars now out on the map. And Eerie does have one back here while I think Misses are more safe at home. So, Eerie's, ooh, I thought he was going to go right to that gold mine. He has an opportunity to uh, get a villager here. Uh, Mr. Wolf, some idle TC time also, actually. 32 villagers to 32. Um, ooh, and forcing Mr. to pull back all of his villagers, which is actually pretty, really nice. Uh, uh, you know, Slowing down that gathering rate time there, and if you get the ass bar out safe, uh, that'd be very nice. Eerie is now on his way to way to H3, and he is building a war academy, so he's gonna be going for paid labor. While the Missa has made a lot more ass bars, and and while wow, now making an armory also, so Missa is not planning on going H3 at all, and he's gonna have an opportunity to have a pretty strong timing push here. He's gonna have about eight ass bars. And Eerie's building another stable. Um, if he could throw it on a barracks, if he notices this, a barracks would be really wild because uh, Eerie might have trouble defending this push once Missa notices Eerie's in H3. There's a very good chance Missa's going to want to do a timing push. Um, and if Persia have very strong spearmen, so if Eerie had some spearmen, they would be very good at defending the push. Um, but he's not building, he doesn't have a barracks, so um, he's going to be able to make mounted archers, but they take a very long time to train 20 seconds. Um, so there we go, Eerie does hit H3, and uh, let's see how Mr. responds, if he notices, he's now moving his acid bars out on the map, and yeah, he's going to have, he's going to have 10 acid bars here, and nope, he's going to have 13 acid bars, so this is going to be a scary timing push from Mista, and Eerie even gathering stones, so I think he just placed down his third town center, yeah, um, but he, he's now got his first mounted archer out, uh, he does have some queued up in each stable right now but as i said they take very long time to train 20 seconds so this is gonna be a scary timing push Eerie does not want to oh he's getting his units caught out of position also oh, he, should, he really needs to run with his units he needs to gather up a decent amount of mounted archers and uh, try to use a10 if he could research a10 he could survive this timing push and if Eerie can survive this timing push he'll be in a good position as he'll be in h3 with three town centers but here we go mist is now targeting down the stable uh now going for the units and um, really need to get eight. Okay, A10 is research, so that's very big. Um, Eerie trying to just force Mister to run around and kind of waste time. Oh, he's gonna lose the villager here. Ooh, just gets pulled off of the villager. Um, and Eerie is now getting out a decent amount of mar mounted archers, so he, I think he's gonna clean this up. Um, he might be losing a couple villagers here and there. A10 is now. He could even punch with his villagers. Uh, let's get a villager count after all this. 46 villagers to 46. But as I said, these mounted archers take a very long time to train, so 
Mist is actually continuing to kill some villagers here, and these ass bars are continuing to come in for the Mista. So this push is now starting to look even more scary. As uh, Eerie could have maybe done a little bit better job microing with his uh, monster archers. And and yeah, this is looking a little rough for Eerie. Yeah, he's not even able to gather any gold right now. He's trying to micro with these with these mounted archers, but I don't know if it's gonna be enough, and he might just lose to this timing push. And there's still uh still eight S bars on the field, only three mounted archers. And uh, Eerie has six villagers idled in his town center and all these villagers exposed on this wood line, and this is looking very scary for Eerie right now. And he's forced he has a lot of vital villagers right now, and he doesn't as I said, if he had that barracks that would have been huge. Uh, even just a few spearmen would have been huge in defending this timing push uh, but you did not have the barracks so you had to train the very slow training mounted archers and um, it's looking scary for CG Erie very quickly once again and let's get a village count 33 villagers to 51 so wow yeah this is actually looking very bad for Erie uh, Mist is now an H3 himself he has already a very large villager gap and uh, and he just has a lot larger military now, and he's able to do whatever he wants, pretty much. Uh, so this is looking like this could already be a very quick GG on Arabia. And, yeah, I, I knew that timing push was going to come as soon as Mr. Saw Yuri hit H3. You had to expect that timing push, well, you know, at least as an observer. You know, Yuri was probably not aware of how many ass bars Miss had made. Um, but, yeah, like I was saying, a, ba a barracks for Yuri would have been huge in holding this push. As the Persian spearmen are just incredibly strong, and I, I think Yuri would have been in a winning position if he built a barracks instead of instead of that second stable. Uh, but now it's it's looking very rough for Yuri actually. 37 villagers only to 56, so uh, Mist is continu continuing to do a lot of damage, and he just has a significant economy economic lead right now. And you're trying to survive even threw down a market to try to buy and sell resources, but yeah, there he goes. There's the GG. And uh, yeah, it just comes down to that timing push. This game, Mista did the timing push, and his timing push worked. While in game one, Eerie would try to do the timing push, and, and his timing push failed. So, um, another pretty quick game there. And it's a little bit rough to see. I would have loved to see a barracks from Eerie and, and just uh, you know, a few little spearmen. It would have been, it could have changed the game completely. You, it might have seemed like this game was very one-sided, but if a barracks was just made and, and a few spearmen, it could have been much different. It could have been in e CG Eerie's favor quite a quite a bit. So just a, you know, a small mistake like that, or, or just a small change in the gameplay, could have uh, you know made him win the ma win the game or drastically changed it. Alright, so Loser does pick the next map. Uh, so Eerie did lose this game too, so he's going to pick the map for game 3. Take a quick look at post game stats. And uh, units, Eerie actually making more units, but he just didn't have them out at the right time, basically. And you're seeing the villager graph just uh, go down a lot for CG Eerie. They're losing a lot of villagers to that timing push. Eerie just uh, asking for a short break, so trying to. Both players trying to collect themselves, give them a short break before we hop into game three. Alright, so while we have a short break, I'll see what's going on in the chat. Yep, yeah, as <clears throat> I've seen some people in the chat, Troy saying um, all Eerie needed was that one barracks. 
and that going paid labor without the Grim is too greedy. And uh, yep, I agree there. Uh, Erie did go for a very greedy build there, and it did not pay off for him. All right, so I'm in Sparta, and it's very, it's great to see Quick Search is working once again. Can't wait until the leaderboards start working, honestly. Um, then it's gonna be a lot of fun. And two v two, I wonder is uh, is two vs two Quick Search working? And it's very cool. They added Spartan tokens. Uh, it's been great to do quick search once again. Once again, in a jump bars online. Random two vs two works, but the party two v two does not work. That's what we're hearing in the chat from a uh, PF2K. All right. Uh, I'm sure they'll hopefully get all that working soon. These guys. Developers do work pretty quickly. Very talented group of people. I know a lot of people really love the two versus two, uh, you know, party in, in Sparta. Um, so, yeah, I honestly can't wait until the leaderboards work. And a lot of people used to play the two versus two, uh, especially for you know on the leaderboards and all that. State your business. Good luck. Alright, so Missa is up 2-0 in this best of seven. Uh, they do still have quite a few games to play, but uh, you know, going down 2-0 in any series, y uh, you don't want that to happen, and uh, you don't want <clears throat> you don't want that snowball to uh, continue to build and, and get larger. Um, as you lose a few games, you know, it can uh, can get out of your control, and you can you know lose your composure and uh, and start playing worse. So. Yuri needs to do what he can to stop that from happening. Alright, so Yuri does choose Oasis. Um, and both players do get to veto one map per series, so I think Mr. is AFK right now, so make sure to give him an opportunity to, to veto Oasis if he chooses to. And Mista does choose the Vito Oasis, so uh, there we go. Oasis is out of the series. Haha, <laughs> you're really upset. Alright, so Eerie is going to have to choose a new map here. And uh, yep, this is Age Vampires Online. This game is free to play. I definitely encourage you guys to give it a try. Uh, it's a very awesome RTS game. Uh, if one of the mods or somebody can post a link in the chat where you can, to download the game for free, I'd appreciate it. It's a very, very good game. Alright, so here he chooses Shelter Pass. Alright, so game three is going to be played on Sheltered Pass.
Ooh. I think these might actually be new. You know what? Yeah, I think these are new. Classic Legendary Treasure Chest. Athens Legendary Treasure Chest. You know what? I actually have a lot of Empire points, so I'm gonna I think I'm gonna go ahead and buy some of these guys some of these for you guys, uh. Yep. Uh in the meantime, let's see what these guys oh well these are just items. Let's uh let's buy one of these chests here. Classic legendary treasure chest. I'm not even level forty, but I'm gonna buy it anyways. Alright, let's see what do we get? Vest of the Sisus, however you wanna say that. Uh and it was a legendary one. I'm not sure if they're always guaranteed to be legendary, so alright, all right, that's actually pretty cool. Throw that on my uh Oh no! Oh wait, undo cell. <laughs> Alright, it's cool that they have that undo cell feature. I don't know if you see that. Alright, so I'm not level 40, so I can't equip this yet. Um, and of course, gear doesn't affect uh, champion world PvP, but uh, that's pretty cool. I'm gonna be able, when I get level 40, I'll be able to have my, some of my units look pretty cool with this vest. Uh, what else can I buy here? Uh, oh, wait, well, that, was the, yeah, that was the classic. Alright, the Athens. Let's see what Athens gets me. Uh, wall joints of the architect. All right, cost and build time. Cool. Ooh, the mist of choosing Norse. Very, very unique. All right, so we're playing on shelter pass. Um, eerie playing as Egyptians. There's been a lot of Egyptians, especially in the later rounds of the tournament, as uh, you're seeing a lot of players think that Egyptians are a very strong sieve, and uh, Celts. And uh, very. Oh, <sighs> uh, and it, yeah, this is actually a very interesting matchup. Now that I think about, it. so you, you haven't, you don't see a whole lot of Norse being played. Uh, they're kind of very underplayed sieve. Um, so this is very interesting to see Norse, and in this specific matchup, Egypt versus Norse, I, I think I do remember it being a very unique one. So uh, let's see if these players are ready, and we're going to have a very good game three here. Alright, this is asking for one second. Would you guys clip me selling it or <laughs> accidentally selling it? I, I didn't lose anything today, right? I was able to undo it. <laughs> oh, I gotta... Alright, looks like they're both ready. We're going to be playing on Sheltered Pass. And I'm very excited for this one. Alright everybody, we are underway in game 3 of the Age of Empires Online Zuda Zuda Classic Tournament. Uh, see, this is the finals of the winner's bracket, CG Erie versus the Mista. The Mista is up 2-0 right now, we're playing on Sheltered Pass. The Mista is playing as the Norse Civilization uh, down in the bottom here, and CG Erie is playing as the Egyptians. So this is going to be a very interesting matchup here, Norse versus Egyptians. Um, Mista has two very nice hunts here, one in the back of his base, very nice. Uh, he does have his gold mine here, try to take a very quick look at the gold mines and everything. As uh, players sometimes complain about sheltered pass being, <laughs> sheltered pass being a little bit uh, imbalanced resource spawns, but it looks like they are good. Um, Mista with a very safe second gold mine, and Eerie also with a very safe second gold mine. So that, that's usually one of the main things, uh, looks very good. And we're seeing Eerie gather wood from the very close... Uh, 
from the trees that are close to town center. So he's going for a very early barracks and he's using his priestess of rots and powers town center. So uh, showing that Eerie is afraid of the age one rush from the Mista. And Norse does also have a very strong tower rush. So we could be seeing a tower rush from the Mista. Uh, the Mista is just building a Soros on the wood line and uh, build Soros on hunt. Nothing crazy from him. And even two villagers are, are building this barracks for Eerie, so he's very afraid of age one rush here. Yeah, I'm seeing one person, somebody say in the chat, uh, <laughs> kind of just how they like when... They, I'm not sure, I don't think it was like this before this most recent patch, I don't know. Or maybe, I'm not sure. But I noticed when the game first load, as, as an observer, it showed that each player has like 9,909 whatever resources of everything. And then it quickly, you know, goes to what they actually have. Maybe I just didn't notice it before, but uh, I didn't recall seeing that before. Uh, but anyways, it's, so it's a little bit funny. Uh, anyways, uh, Eerie does have his barracks up now, and he is making Spearman in age one. So, um, and Miss is gathering stone already. So he could be going for the very fast age two town center, or he could be going for a tower rush. But we are not, we do not see a barracks from the Mista, So. Uh, already a very unique start to this game as usually you don't see Egyptians making spearmen or you usually you don't see Egyptians rushing. Ooh, Eerie with a little bit of idle TC time here needs to fix this. Needs a cube of villager. He's slipping a little bit here actually. He's focusing too much on the age one uh, spearmen. And Mist is already on his way to age two so um, yeah I don't know this spear rush. Okay, Alright. Uh, oh sorry I had chat. Um, somebody's saying, you're saying he didn't have a second hunt, uh, so players do get a restart, um, well, so, yeah, shutter pass can sometimes be, uh, All right, so they're both agreeing uh, they don't mind uh, restarting this. As Eerie felt like he was didn't have a good second hunt, um, and a lot of people players are very nervous. And yeah, there are two lines here, so it makes it kind of very difficult to get on this hunt. Um, and Missa, you know, is agreeing with it. So uh, we're just gonna replay this one. As shelter passes sometimes have unbalanced spawns. And uh, both these players respect each other, and um, you know they don't—they're not expecting either of them to like try to cheat or get an unfair advantage over the other one. So they have respect for each other, and uh, you know they're gonna allow the their opponent to restart map if they feel uh, it's needed. And unfortunately, in Age One Person Line, there's no pause button, so that's one very big complication. You can't pause and like you know and discuss what's going on. Um, but that's fine. Alright, I'll keep the chat up this time. Alright, same thing though. So here we go. Missed a very safe second gold mine and hunt. And looks. Oh, you know what? Um, this is a little unfortunate. And actually, this gold mine is stuck. Uh, we're gonna have to get a restart, I think, actually. He might have. S yeah, we're gonna do a restart. He might have a, a, another gold mine not too far, but um, Alright, so this gold mine was trapped in this wood line, and this would probably be pretty significant. Um, so it's best to just restart it. Yeah, and yeah, if you look at Eerie's other gold mine, it you know is up. So that's uh, yeah, that's big. Definitely requires a restart there. All right, Oop. third time is the charm.
All right. Both players are ready, and we are getting into game three once again here. We do have a pretty good viewer count watching, um, so thank you everybody for turning out. This is a very, very good series. Let me know what you guys are thinking about this game in general. If you guys are new viewers to Age of Empires Online, or if you're just hyped for this series. Let me know in the chat. Alright, so here we go. Um, going to keep a close eye on the map once again. Because as I said, Shelter Pass is one of those maps that, that can cause quite a bit of trouble with spawns. Um, so, Mr. does have his first hunt. The hunts are very even. Ooh, Eerie actually unfortunately building a Soros on, a very, on the edge of the wood line. Not the best place. Um, so right now it looks balanced, and we're not seeing a second gold mine for either player. Umisa does have another hunt over here, but uh, the resources do not get revealed on the map until they're scouted. So it makes it a little bit harder job for the observer. You have to wait a little bit to, for the game to go on. Okay, so there we go. Nice uh, second hunt for Eerie, just pretty much like Missa. Uh, so right now it looks very even. Um, one big thing is look for a second gold mines, uh, but they're gonna have to scout out the map a little bit further. Um, in the other games, they did have very, very defensive gold mines, like right in the back of both of their town centers. But um, as I said, you know, sometimes you have really defensive gold mines, but sometimes you don't. But as long as one player had, you know, doesn't, as long as one player ha has a defensive gold mine and the other one doesn't, um, then you're okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> For some reason, I cannot speak right now. But I think you get what I'm saying. Alright, so here is a second gold mine for Eerie. It is out there, a bit far, and we are seeing a second gold mine for the Mista, which is about e somewhat equal distance. And uh, right now I think it looks pretty even. It just looks like this is a sheltered pass where there's not a very defensive second gold mine. Um, so that's fine. Um, Yep, so here he is typing in the chat that second gold mine is far, but um, I'm saying it, it looks like both players' second gold mine is far, so it's even. Um, so Erie is uh, not building a barracks in age one this time. He's uh, got a storehouse on his stone mine, and uh, it's acting as that two for one storehouse, so that's very nice right on the berries and the stone mine. Um, yeah, I think it looks. It looks pretty even. Uh, Mr. does have a lot of cows here, I'm seeing. Let's take a look at Eerie. Oh, man. Does he really have zero cows? That Okay, he does have two now. Wow, look at this. Mr. building a barracks with his uh, infant, with his scout in age one. Uh, the infantry scout is able to build a barracks, but he builds at a very slow rate. So this barracks is going to take quite a little bit of time to get up. But very interesting strategy already. Ooh, actually, this is kind of hinting that there's a good chance Mr. could be going for a tower rush. And he's actually not gathering any stone though, so maybe not. It's, he's doing a very interesting build here. And uh, the Mista building an outpost with his other scout on the other side of the map, so uh, very interesting. And Sheltered Pass can be a low resource map where um, if you take map control, it can be very good and beneficial. So that's kind of what Mist is doing right now. It looks like he's going to have quite a lot of map control. He is now building a Soros on his stone mine, and he does have quite a lot of cows here. And here we go, Mista is in age 2 and he's now training war dogs. Uh, they cost 25 food and they take up zero population, but they're pretty good raiding units. Uh, so a very unique unit, only Norse is the only city that has this unit. Um, so Mista, very uh, unique opening to this game already. Oh wow, look at this, Eerie building his second TC, but he's building it extremely far out. And as long as Mista doesn't see this, this could be a very good spot, but here we go. Mrs. Word Arts are now going for this hunt. Um, oh, if they find this TC, though, this is going to be big. And they are going to find the town center. Mista kind of luckily, I don't know, finding it perfectly. Wow, that's huge. So uh, it does cause Eerie to cancel his town center, and he might lose a villager here. And he now doesn't have enough stone for his second town center, so that's already a huge pickup for the Mista. Uh, delaying that town center a significant amount of time. Ooh, that villager does live. So Eerie, uh, m he minimizing his losses by not losing any villagers, so that's very good. But his second TC is getting going to be built a lot later. And Mr. is now making throwing axemen. 
and yeah, it looks like both players just have very far second gold mines, so um, it, it, it's it's fair. Um, and here we go, the first tower is being built for the Mista, so the Mista is going with this tower rush, and he does have a large army already, a lot of war dogs, 11 war dogs, and they're attacking this town center right away, and they could possibly deny this TC. Um, his scout is going to die from the TC fire, I think it's going to be close, but I think the TC will get up. Uh, meanwhile, guard tower is also being built, and this TC is going to be up with really low HP. Um, oh, he moves his scout away from, out of the TC range, so the scout does live. Um, wow, look at how much HP those war dogs took from that town center. So the TC did get up, but it definitely took a lot of uh, damage from there. And Eerie actually idle TC, doesn't have enough resources to train a villager. And this could be looking scary. As I said, Sheltered Pass is a map where claiming map control is very good and very um, kind of important as it's very low food, very low food map. So Eerie's already running very low on on places to gather food. He does have this back um, hunt, but he's going to have to kind of have some units to claim this. And these tower, this first tower does finally get up, and second one already being built. And he already got pushed off of his uh, first initial hunt, so uh, you're in a little bit of a scary position. He does have two cows only, and some of these berries here, but... And let's get a villager count. 24 villagers for Eerie, 23 for the Mista. And but Eerie running around with a lot of his villagers. He's gonna use his villagers to attack the tower and uh, and not let it get up. But ooh, and the one villager is very low HP. If Mista can uh, can um, focus that one down. And ooh, Eerie might lose his scout here also. The scout has a lot of HP. He could. Bring him back and uh, get him healed up. And uh, at this point in the game, every unit is actually really important here. So um, Yuri trying to scramble and make some units, but as I said, he's trapped in this base and uh, just doesn't have anywhere to really gather resources. He's now trying to get this hunt. He does have a decent amount of axemen now, so uh, pushing Mister back a little bit. And we have 30 villagers to 26, so while Mista is keeping a lot of aggression up, he is on one town center, and uh, he's falling behind in economy a little bit, so. Um, so if Eerie can hold on, uh, he could be in an okay spot here. But with all this being said, he's, he's housed right now. Um, yeah, he, he does have resources to make villagers, but he does need to get some more houses up. And Mista trying to continue to build more towers here. And uh, Yuri actually has a pretty good force here, so he can uh, push Mista back here and, and uh, take out this outpost, which would be a very nice pickup. Well, I'd really like to see Yuri heal his, his scout as units, it's a scout type, so no unit in the game has a multiplier versus him. So if you get this guy healed up to 600 HP, he can tank a lot of damage. Ooh, and Mista does have a barracks exposed here, so if he does lose these, this forward base, um, then he could be in a scary position. 200 wood investment. Um, oh, but the Axemen are focusing down the barracks while they're getting attacked. Uh, by soaring Axemen and War Dogs. Oh, the scout is going in. No Priestess Ra is being pulled. Does have two Priestess Ra. I think they could be really uh, impactful in, the, in these fights. I think I would like to see them heal the units as they could heal while in combat. So, and uh, like I said, healing, and especially. In this situation in the game where there's just so few units, where like every unit is very important. Um, so having two priests to would be, actually be huge in these fights. But it looks like Eerie is pushing him back a bit. Um, but still this clock is ticking for Eerie as these berries are about to run out and he did, okay he does have this hunt back here. Um, and now Eerie is attacking uh, this guard tower and someone throwing axemen so and then we're seeing Mista float a lot of resources actually as it's it can be very hard to macro uh, when you're doing like these like tower rushes and four base rushes uh, when you're sitting on one TC and it's just very different macro from what uh, normal games are so it's very easy to float a lot, a lot of resources and Eerie is gonna kill this barracks so this is gonna be a very nice pickup actually and uh, Mista, yeah, looks like he doesn't have any military units out or, or very low number, so uh, Mista could be in a bad position right now as Eerie was able to break this contain. 
And we're seeing 41 villagers for Eerie to 33 from the Missa. So Missa's economy is very far behind right now. And uh, Eerie's looking like he's in a good spot. He is forced to put down farms, but he's able to already get up seven farms. So um, very quickly switching to, to farms, which each farm does cost 100 wood. While meanwhile, Mist is just gathering, you know, not being forced to farm and gathering from his food um, without spending resources. And there's a good size of camels out on the map, and they're going to be out raiding. So, uh, Mist is floating a lot of gold right now. He's trying to get his second town center up, but he's really struggling. He has uh, just this one military building, and well, he does have this one over here, but uh, looks like it's going to go down soon. So, Mist is actually in a very, really, very scary position. He's now throwing down second barracks at home and he's gonna have to very quickly get an army out and Norse have longhouses which cost uh, 100 wood and they give you 10 population instead of 5 so when you kill a longhouse um, it it's a lot more impactful than just killing a regular house and Mist is trying to throw down towers and panic here but uh, Eerie is having has a pretty strong push here whose Priestess Ra does go down very good job Mr. Sniping Priestess Ra Mr. is researching Loom to increase his villager HP to try to tank. But there's a lot of units on the field for Eerie right now. And wow, Mr. is actually going age 3. He's just floating so many resources. Um, still attacking with these war dogs. But I think Eerie can focus down the military buildings here. He's kind of running around with a lot of his units. Um, focusing down longhouses would be very good also. And there's just a lot of units for Eerie right now. And this is going to be very tough for him to hold. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to uh, hold this one. And Eerie might be able to take, uh, take one first game off of Missa and put a series 2-1. to one. Eerie with 48 villagers to 35 only for the Missa. And we're seeing Missa panic and using 11 villagers to build a barracks. So Mista is going to get age 3 here, but what is he going to do with it? As his resources are now pretty low, and there is a lot of military units for Eerie in Mista's base. And it's looking very bad for Mista right now. Eerie even moving on the map and uh, going for some berries. 49 villagers to 25. So, that, yeah, that's it. Uh, and there's the GG. So, once again, another game that these games have been changing and turning very quickly. Um, a lot of times you see games that are very back and forth. But these games are more so just being de decided by kind of like one big fight. Mista just lost his forward base and... Um, and and then just couldn't hold the push. So Eerie does take game three. The tower rush did not work this game. Yeah, and we're seeing Mista get, getting outgathered by quite a bit of resources here in a very short game. Alright, so Mista chooses Mountain Crossing for Game 4.
And the Mist is going to be playing Greek. Very interesting choice. Um, haven't been seeing a whole lot of Greek in the later rounds of the tournament. And the Eerie is choosing Persians. Alright, and here we go. We are getting into game four. Um, CG Erie versus the Mista. The Mista is up two to one here. <clears throat> this is a best of seven series. And this game is being played on Mountain Crossing. The Mista is playing as the Greeks, while CG Erie is playing as the Persians. Alright, so both players do have this back uh, pond here, and uh, Mrs. Layout is a little bit weird. If he wants to get a restart, he can. Um, I'll keep an eye on the chat, see if uh, players say mention anything. Um, but it looks like Mrs. actually building a store house on his wood line, so I think he's okay. Um, it's fine. I mean, his usually there's an opening right here, so your villagers don't have to walk quite as far because Mrs. Villagers have to walk a little bit around the wood line to build a dock but it's not that big of a deal and it's not it looks like Mrs. not saying anything so he's not requesting a restart um, and a pretty unique hunt here there's two woofs so Mr. was able to kill these two woofs right next to the storehouse and um, it's actually right on gold mine also And Erie is going for Barracks in Age 1. Here we go. Already opening up to be very interesting. Uh, two villagers on the barracks. So uh, he's going to be doing a spar bar rush it looks like. And Mrs. is sending a villager to the far pond here. This pond either spawns on, up on top or on the bottom on uh, Mountain Crossing in this game to spawn up top. So Mrs. is very quickly taking the, the top pond. Um... Alright, and yeah, Mr. going for this pond before his own, before his pond back at home. Very interesting uh, opening from both these players, honestly. And Mr. okay, looks like Mr. Did, yeah, Mr. did scout this, so he's already researching the loom upgrade as he's a little bit scared from uh, about this spar bar rush. And he's now throwing down a barracks, uh, three villagers on the barracks, so... Uh, the spar bar rush is scaring him a bit. And the first spar bar is now attacking the villager, and Mr. is using his own villagers to punch back. And Mr. does now have his dock up, and he's making a fishing boat, and Erie is going to scout this. And this one villager is getting pretty low HP here. Uh, Mr. is going to be able to pull him back though. And Mr. does have a Spearman out of his own now. And Eerie is now building a Staros on his stone mine. So it looks like he's not going to commit too heavily to this rush. 
And looks like he's going to want to go H2 fairly soon to get his second town center up. Uh, missing, Mr. has his two spearmen and is continuing to use these two villagers to uh, punch away actually and do a little bit of damage. So it looks like Erie is now calling off his age one rush. Uh, just do, try to do a little bit of damage there, but not too heavily of rush. But he does he does have a uh, six bar bars out and even a seventh here, so he does still have a pretty high spar bar account. As there's only three spearmen, um, but Erie is now on his way to age two. Uh, Mist is gonna have a third fishing boat out though, and fishing boats are very good for your economy. You gather fish very quickly. And uh, these seven spar bars are now moving back in. Uh, Mist is now on his way to H2 and he's gathering stone himself. So there are eight spar bars here and they are going to take out the storehouse. Uh, Mist is going to make another spearman here. And now here he is trying to move in on the wood line, see if he could maybe pick off a villager from Mista, but Spearmen are right here. And this is going to force Mista to run with his wood villagers just a little bit though. And he's going to actually try to focus on the storehouse, not going back on Spearmen. And there are uh, two pretty low HP Spearmen here. Uh, so nice pickup, here he does kill that storehouse, so uh, Mista is going to go ahead and build a new storehouse right away. Let's take a look at Erie's base. Um, both players are now in age two. Erie did overgather stone by quite a bit there. Um, oh, and Mr. Wow with a villager ran very far, and uh, I'm not sure what this villager was doing. He might have been trying to build a, a dock on the back pond here, as I've seen Mr. do this before, but there's no real opening actually to do it. Uh, the only place to build a dock is right here, and right Erie would have easily seen it. All right, so Eerie does place in, is placing down his second town center um, on this gold mine and wood line, but far from his TC. And now Missa doing the same. We have 23 villagers to 22, but three of these are fishing boats, so Missa's economy is going to be quite a bit better. And now Eerie is now building a dock, um, so he's going to be working on getting some fishing boats uh, at his back pond. And Mist is already researching net lures, so his fishing boats are going to be gathering uh, a lot more efficiently. And he's four fishing boats on this pond, so it's always uh, very significant. Whoever can claim this pond gets a very large advantage. So here he is now queuing up some fishing boats for his uh, pond back at home, and he is building a archer range. And now Mist is building a dock back at his pond at home, so he's going to be able to get some more fishing boats out here. Mista does lose his scout there to this army of spar bars and single spearmen. And we do also have a stable going down for Erie and another archer range. And we have a stable and an archer range going down for Missa, so he's going to have a 1-1-1 one, one, one military opening. Ooh, and there goes Erie's scout. Snipe down. Ooh, and even a fifth fifth fishing boat on this pond here. Meanwhile, Erie only has two to seven, so Erie's economy is going to be falling behind pretty quickly here, I believe. 35 villagers to 41. Um, 
So yeah, as every second goes by, it looks like Erie might be falling behind more. He is getting some more fishing boats back at home, but um, he does have a decent sized army. I uh, might be looking to do another timing push here. He is sending out one ass bar. Perhaps he can take out his dock here. And Erie is on the move. He has a very well mixed army. Some S bars, eight spar bars, seven spearmen, nine bowmen. So he has a very well rounded army here. And it looks like there's a single spearman moving out as a scout, and he does go down. Uh, so it looks like Erie's pushing into the main base of the mist. He's not going for this stock, which is interesting. Uh, going for another timing push here. And Mista just queued up to age three, so um, this could be a good time uh, timing push for Erie to attack as Mista just now starts aging. So see, Mista might cancel his age up or uh, or just keep going. He does have a fair amount of resources still. And here we go, very big engagement. Um, hard to say which way this one's gonna go as Sarah Sofer are now trying to get on these Bowmen, but they're kind of uh, having some having a hard time getting to the Bowmen. Um, but with that said, Erie's neat line really got cleaned up pretty quickly there uh, looks pretty even right now uh, just trading units kind of back and forth here uh, hard to say which who's favorite who's favorite here Mista does have defenders advantage so his units are going to be joining the fight uh, much quicker here but Mista is getting pushed back a little bit here so uh, Erie is fighting underneath town center fire though And Mista is now in H3. Let's see, he does have. Okay, he does have this gold mine. Uh, he's, yeah, this gold mine's just not being started, actually, so. He's able to safely gather from there. And now Eerie is uh, falling back, canceling the attack, and he's going H3 himself. So Mista was able to hold that uh, without too much trouble. 50 villagers for Eerie and 59 for the Mista. So Mista is looking like he's in a better position right now in this game. He's uh, ahead in age and uh, ahead in economy. Here he is moving on the map to gather resources though, so that's very nice. Ooh, his double armor is going down for the Mista. And a market already going down for the Mista. Uh, here he's being very active with his ass bars, looking for some villagers to pick off. Ooh, and here he has a pretty scary army. If you could catch this army, um, he could do some serious damage. Ooh, uh, Erie does get his single S bar caught, and here we go. Looks like Erie is moving for this uh, for the dock, and this would be very nice uh, to pick up, as it would make all these fishing boats go idle and not, you know, be able to gather anywhere. So that would be a very good pickup. He's meanwhile raiding at the same time over here. The Mista does queue up a trireme, but will it get made before the dock goes down? Oh, and look at this counterattack. There are a lot of bowmen, a lot of Sarah Silver are now getting on these bowmen. And um, and yeah, I think this tri this trireme will get made, so that's uh, that bot missed the time he needed there. And we do have a third town center going third town sensor going down for the Mista. Also for CG Erie. So Mrs. being very active on the map, also using sending his Sarah Sulfuri out to to get some scouting information, looking for villagers, and actually just miss these villagers. Here he is having a little bit of gold crisis, but I think he's now fixing that. And Erie, Erie is moving in with a very scary force here. Let's see where Mista is. He does have a large force himself, but they're a bit out of position. Um, 
Let's get a villager count. 50, 60 villagers for CG Yuri, 74 for the Mista. So Mista is up ahead in the economy by a fair amount here. And as you're seeing, he has quite a large stack of resources. And there he goes. He now advance, is advancing to age 4. And uh, Yuri's kind of, is really just stuck in age 3 right now. Are you trying to pick off a house here? Do whatever he can. Does lose one ass bar. Oh, and the house does actually live. All right, so you're trying to push in at a different location, and ooh, if you could stop this siege workshop from going getting up, that'd be big. Because as Mist is gonna be age four here pretty soon, he's gonna be looking to train ballistas, and um, ballistas there are a lot of bowmen, so even a single ballista can will be huge. Uh, um, for the Mista. Oh yeah, and it looks like the Siege Workshop is going to get up. I think Yuri does see that he's H4, so this is where Yuri needs to push in. He needs to prevent the siege, this uh, Siege Workshop from getting up. And a uh, second one is being built over here also. But he's actually losing some units here. And uh, Ballista is now in queue, and looking at Yuri's army is mainly Bowman. So this is going to be very tough for Yuri to deal with. And there's still even a lot of Sarah Sulfur on the field. I don't think there's that many Spearmen for uh, Eerie. Only eight Spearmen, so. Mista is sitting in a comfortable position right now. Uh, Mista is, is moving out with a small force, though. He could. Uh, looks like he's going to lose his entire army, actually. So this is going to be a very nice pickup for CG Eerie. Um, yeah, Missa just trying to move out, be a little bit active on the map, but not working out and losing a lot of units there for free. But the ballistas are now on the field, and how will Eerie answer to the ballistas? That is a question. We do have a, a proxy siege workshop, and essentially it's being built right on top of Missa's outpost. So Missa does see this, so it's, you really eliminate that surprise threat. And there's a decent number of acid bars on the field now for Erie. Um, so you need to somehow flank these ballistas. And Erie is now making his proxy rams as Greek. Uh, their army is is very pierce damage heavy, so they can't have trouble uh, killing rams. Um, so rams are very good make versus Greek, and that's what uh, Erie's looking to do right now. But Mista has a very strong army and he's looking to push in on Yuri's main base right now. Sadly, this uh, siege workshop was built right on top of a outpost, so took away that surprise effect. And here we go, very big engagement. Yuri is going for the flank here. There are three ballistas and a lot of bowmen. He needs to somehow take down these ballistas and look at that. So many bowmen dying right there to these ballista shots. Still three, three alive. So many bowmen going down from these ballistas, and uh, Yuri just not really being able to target down the the ballistas. Trying to spread out his bowmen, but so many going down from every single shot there. Uh, Yuri losing a lot of units here, and he's falling behind population by a significant amount right now. Uh, still one more ballista on the field. But Mrs. reinforcements are actually really slow here. Um, there's still two more ballistas actually. And fourth town center is up for Missa, so Missa's looking very good right now. And uh, and yeah, Missa eliminated Erie's entire army there, and is a uh, much higher population right now. So yeah, that very large mass of bowmen. Uh, did struggled versus those blisses, you know, significantly. Uh, Erie did try to get the Asbar flank onto the blisses, but there just w wasn't enough cavalry, and Miss had a very large army, so he was able to take out those cavalry pretty quickly. And uh, Erie's struggling to repopulate, sitting at only 147 population, while Miss is at 188. Yuri is floating a lot of wood, needs to get some more villagers on gold. He does have this gold mine right next to his base. I'm not sure if he's like not noticing it. He could be overlooking it, honestly. It might not He might be it might be getting lost in the trees for him or something, I'm not sure. He's on this gold mine, but Ooh, and he's losing more villagers on uh, over here also. Let's get a villager count. 92 villagers now though to 79, so uh Yuri 
uh, continue to make a lot of villagers while Missa uh, fell back a little bit on the villager production. But we have six ballistas on the field, so this is going to be very difficult for Eerie to uh, to deal with. And we do now have these rams move in for Eerie, so we're going to try to buy him some time here. But just a single Hippocon attacking it, which is actually doing very good though on two villagers. And Mist is now just getting a bit larger bank uh, kind of every second here. Uh, Yuri does have a good number of acid bars, but yeah, you know, trying to get us around here. Who's moving in? Oh, the spear runner kind of out of position. His blisters are getting a lot of free shots now, and uh, oh, this is not looking good for Yuri trying to move in with these acid bars, but Mist is fighting right under, right by these the wood line, so there's not much surface area, which is a very good spot to fight. And uh, it looks like Eerie's army is just getting completely eliminated here, and these blisters weren't able to get touched. Because that looked like a very one sided fight for the Mist, though. So Eerie just falling more behind there in that fight. Uh, very good positioning from the Mista. Still five ballistas far and away now. Ooh, forward seed workshops, four barracks, and there we go, there's the GG. Alright, so Missa takes game four. Alright, so we're going to have a short break before we get into this next game here. So I was buying some stuff here while we were waiting for that next game to start. 
Just got some, I think these are like my first legendary items I ever got. But I'm not level 40 yet with Persia. I'll have to wait. Myst Mystery Epic Advisor. I could sell it. Well, I don't know, use advisors. Uh, epic treasure chest. Why not? Let's give this one a try. Oop. Uh, all right, some sandals. Movement speed. Okay, for all for priests. All right. Not a big gear guy, so I'm not really sure if these are good or not. But. Golden tickets. Should I, I, you guys want to see a golden ticket? <laughs> Why not? Let's get some more raffling going. Buying a golden ticket. Whatever it. I forgot what it does exactly. Uh, I have to like turn it in somewhere. Tickets. Got me clay, small clay pots. That's lame. And he got me this. I don't like it. Anybody want either of these items? Somebody open up the trade chat and I'll send you these two right now. Let's First one to do it. Uh, oh, abandon. Is that? Oh, that's all I got. Whoever wants these two items can open up the trade chat to me. And give you giveaway, free giveaway. So Erie chooses Treasure Island, and um, I think this is 3-1 right now, isn't this? Yeah, this is a best of seven, so Erie needs to win this one to survive.
Well, they chose Treasure Island. underway in uh, this game five I believe Mist is up three to one this is a best of seven series so Erie has to win this game to stay alive in the series oh uh, what the heck All right, what is this guy doing? Alright, so you're, uh, we're waiting for Mr. I think his game crashed, so... Alright, there we go. This is game five of the Age Jumpers Online Zuda Zuda Classic Finals for the winners bracket. This is the Missa versus CG Erie. Missa is currently up three to one. Uh, we're playing on Treasure Island, and CG Erie is playing as the Egyptians down the bottom, and Missa is playing as the Celts up top. And Missa is putting his villagers onto the wood line right away, so he looks like he's going to be going for a very early barracks and uh, going for the age one bar uh, age one spearman rush. While uh, CG Erie does have a hunt, which is in a pretty defensive location, kind of to the side of CC, so um, he's building Staros on his hunt, and he's also putting 
villagers on the tr trees closer to town center, so he's going to be going for a very early barracks himself, it looks like. Oh, wow. And, okay, Mr. Changing his mind, actually, and uh, now building a storehouse on his wood line and a storehouse on his hunt, so he's not going to be going for super fast barracks. And Eerie is building his barracks with two builders, while the Mista is his barracks is gonna be quite a bit slower. Pops up on the stream there. There we go. I think you guys are. And we do have a three dollar donation. And give your anxiety. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> and um, all right. So let's get back to this game. Erie uh, does have his bear up, and he's now training spearmen. Um, Mr. Building is also on stone mine without building an age one barrack, so uh, and already has his three houses, so he's opening up very defensive and, and very greedy. While the Egyptians usually just make barracks to defend from age one rushes, so uh, I think Yuri's maybe overreacting. He's very scared, as you see, he's keeping his spearmen at home. Um, as the Egyptian age one spearmen are very weak units, but Mr. is already on his way to age two. And it's already looking like Mrs. Build is just a lot better. Eerie's now moving out with the Spearmen, but um, it's going to be a while before they even get there. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if the if the donation uh, <laughs> if the donation gets read. I don't think the lady's voice was reading the donation, so I'll, I will have to read that donation. Uh, I believe that donation, three dollar donation, said. Uh, I believe in you, Eerie. Aweo, Aweo, hype, Aweo, hype, Aweo, hype. So let's see if Eerie can win a game and keep the series going. So these spearmen from Eerie is gonna push Miss off of this hunt. Uh, Miss is already getting pretty close to having enough resources for a second town center, though. And he's already H2. We're not seeing any early docks uh, from either player or this game. Ooh, these houses are actually built out of TC range. Ooh, that one spearman walked right underneath TC, so they get sniped. But this is actually a poor location. Oh, wow. This TC is actually sniping them. Uh, he was able to manually... Looks like it's just barely within TC range. He was able to manually target the spearman with the town center. I'm um, surprised he was able to fire that far. Uh, so the house actually does live. And now the miss is building a second town center. A very defensive location. Uh, within TC range and just on the second gold line. And Erie's now just going to H2. He's gathering a lot of stone himself, so uh, he's going to be pretty much following up the miss. So he's going to be just much slower with everything. I'm surprised to see neither player. Oh, here we go. Now Erie is placing down Doc, which I do like a lot. And uh, the stock is now being built. Um, looks like Mr. both of the players are actually scouting the coastline. And Erie does have his spearman position to chat to uh, prevent a dock from going up. So, oh, here we go. And we do have the Mrs. Villager moving in. And Erie's spearmen are in perfect location. So they are catching this Villager and going to very quickly kill him. Oh, I better kill him. One more hit. One, two more hits, probably. One more hit. Do uh, 10 DPS need the exact amount needed. Uh, so very nice, um, Yuri does deny that dock by having these spearmen made, so that's very nice. And he's now making some fishing boats, so that's going to help his economy a lot. Ooh, and we have this Rhino charging at these villagers. Um, this is actually very nice, because Rhino's going to die right on top of this storehouse, and uh, it's going to be a very good hunting hunt source for Yuri. 
And you're putting his second town center in pretty far a spot here. Ooh, wow. Okay, Missa trying to change the meta game. Very interesting opening, doing a three archer range opening. And looks like he's going to be going for a slinger spam, which actually used to be a thing way kind of back in the day. Um, having huge balls of slingers used to be a, actually really very popular. Yeah, that's actually exactly how this matchup used to be played. Um, you used to just kite with hu huge amount of slingers, so Mista pulling back a strategy from very old metagame. Um, so we're going to see if that can work this game. And we do have two fishing boats out and a third one being made for Erie, so he's going to have a pretty strong economy when those fishing boats, uh, with those three fishing boats. And the second TC is giving up quite a bit later, but... Uh, villager count 27 villagers to 31. Smith is ahead in villagers a little bit right now. And these couple slingers are now coming down, taking out this axeman. And uh, Eries doesn't really have military, so he's gonna have to. He's forced to pull these villagers back off this hunt. Uh, he does have his three fishing boats, and he's continuing to scout the coastline, which is very good. So this is very funny, very old metagame style, slingers uh, versus slingers, Celt in Egypt, uh, pretty funny to see. And we do have a little rating force from Erie over here. And these get, the spearmen are now going into the woodline of Missa, and they're going to be out of TC range, so they could get some villagers here. I think they should focus on one at a time, rather, they eat, looks like each one is attacking a different one. And uh, Mist is using his villagers now to punch at the spearmen. Uh, one villager is going to go down, and he could have focused on another one there too. A few are pretty low. He's going to save this villager, and uh, looks like the rest of these villagers is going to punch the spearmen to death here. Ooh. Oh, just one. It's a one-on-one -on -one fight right now. The other his friends are leaving him. Ooh, Mist does pull him back though. Um, and Mr. does have a decent sized army of slingers here, so he's going to try to continue to hit and run here. Ooh, and they're in uh, Eerie's woodline right now, which is actually very bad. And uh, Eerie has a, doesn't really have enough units to deal with this, so this slinger attack on the woodline can uh, could be very bad for Eerie, actually. He is now he does have you know reinforcements, of course, and uh, the X-Men are now starting to get on the slingers and tank the damage, while he has some of his own slingers, which are... A little bit weaker, um, they are able to push Mista back here. They're still, he's, uh, you're, he's still losing some villagers though on this woodline. Uh, it's now getting cleaned up, more slingers coming in, so we're seeing slingers being used to raid. Only three fishing boats from Erie. I'd like to see him even make even more fishing boats there. That would be one thing that could really get him uh, an advantage in this game if he had a huge sea economy, but he's not really doing that. And we're at 39 villagers to 51, so Mr. have really taken the economy lead by quite a lot, actually. Um, and this is where it starts to get scary when when uh, you get a large mass of slingers and you can kind of just hit and run and Eerie's just throwing his units in little by little and that's, that's exactly what you don't want to do. Oh, and losing more villagers garrison points are a little bit off for Eerie. Um, not looking on top of his game, this, this one getting uh, thrown off by this unusual playstyle from Mista. And now he's moving in with this army using, wow, three priests of Ra, so they're, oh, they're all going to get sniped right now, though. One does go down, and a second. Ooh, and all these priests of Ra's do go down, the one left, but, uh, she's about to go down herself, yep. And, uh, Miss is just continuing to attack with these slingers, uh, Miss now even has the druid in the fight. And just constant engagements here back and forth and I think Mista keeps winning each one little by little uh, 44 villagers to 61 so the economy difference is now starting to become very large actually
And Eerie already falling into a scary position in this game. He does have a fourth fishing boat. The, like I said, sees the one thing that could keep him in this game. Alright, he is going H3 right now. So, um, if he could hold on and get an elephant out, then that would completely change the tide of this game. Um, or even maybe champion Axeman. Um, but, oh, he needs to pull back with his army. He cannot lose these units right here. He's losing units for free right here. And he's spending quite a bit of resources to go to H3, so he's going to have even less military. Oh, but he's losing more and more villagers. And uh, Eerie qu very quickly falling into a scary position. He does have enough resources to to drop down a fortress or another town center. And now Miss is going for the wood line. And um, this is looking rough for Erie. He's trying to build a town center here, but um, I think he's going to get it up. But his, his And this is actually perfect for Missa. All of his spearmen are in really good choke points, so these axemen aren't even really getting on them. They're tanking some damage, but they're now finally starting to get on top of the slingers. Um, um, and three druids in the back, so this positioning for the Missa is probably like as perfect as it could be. Um, there are just, you know, reinforcements for Erie while no reinforcements for Mista. So this army does actually get cleaned up. Um, but now there's already a large force over here. Oh, and Mista's age 3 and now making swan ships, so he's going to claim C. Or he's going age 3 but um, you can make swan ships in H2. Now 52 villagers to 73. And the, the old school ball of slingers is back. Uh, no elephants on the field. If if you could have got even a single elephant, would have been huge. Uh, but you need to build that fortress, and then they are very expensive units. So, and still regular axemen. And this is rough. Uh, Erie needs to win this game to stay alive in the series. Um, it's looking pretty rough for him right now. Missed even throwing down a very far, very forward fortress with a lot of villagers now moving forward, and he is now even claiming C. So uh, Miss is sitting in a very good position right here. And. The winner of this series will move on to the grand finals, and the loser of this series will then move into the loser's bracket and be able to uh, continue to play and uh, you know get a chance to get go to the grand finals. And now Missa killing a lot of villagers with all these slingers, and that is a huge, huge right there. Um, you're already quite far behind, and right there losing about 8 villagers, which is very significant. 49 villagers to 84. So Miss is very he's ahead in the military and extremely far ahead in the economy. So this game is very quickly becoming one very one sided. And I'm not sure there's much uh Eerie's gonna be able to do here in this game. Uh, he's trying to get us around here with his camels and his uh axemen and slingers, but Mr. just going to retreat with his force and uh, he's getting this fortress up uh, take claiming some map control here. And uh, Mrs. Economy looking very good, sitting at 160 population with a large bank of resources. And here we go, a very big engagement. And um, Mrs. is going to try to retreat here. He does not have slingers and bowmen. Uh, looks it's a pretty even trade, but the main thing is Mrs. has the resources to to make more units, while Yuri pretty much does not. So he's he's gonna struggle much more with uh, getting reinforcements in here.
very funny, funny game. Uh, attacking with slingers and uh, I don't know, Missa has a very unique way of uh, getting a very small advantage and just winning and kind of winning off a very small advantage where you'd think the game would go on for much longer. Um, but he, he can hold his advantages very strongly and not allow, allow his opponent to sneak back in the game at all. And we now have some rams being made from this fortress and Missy even going H4 now, so very far ahead in this game. Uh, Eerie trying to throw down a market and a siege workshop here. More rams continuing to come in from Missa right here. And uh, you're just losing more and more villagers, 62 villagers to 85. And here, very big engagement. Missa could get caught out of position. There we go. This is gonna be a very good trade for Eerie. This is definitely what Eerie needs. Uh, he needs a lot. He needs a lot of these engagements to uh, kind of creep back in this game. To be honest. Uh, still two more rams trying to take out this town center over here while these villagers are repairing it. Uh, there are some military units for Erie coming in though. And if there was just one elephant could kill this army so quickly. Uh, that's that's like the one thing that could really be bringing Erie back in this game. But now Miss is making carpentums. He's in H4, so um, Erie trying to move in, do a counter push here. Uh, trying to hold on in this game. Lone Priestess of Ra. Ooh, the entire army might be sneaking by her. She lives. And Mr. just pretty much gathering all the resources that are on Eerie's side of the map. And Eerie is uh, taking out some of these archer ranges, pushing in. Uh, and it looks like Mista is using her right right now as Augur is doing his dance. And I think, er, oh no, converting actually. There was a deer right there. He did convert a camel. And now we're getting a lot of Carpentums on the field, and they are going to be very deadly. They are actually ranged units, so uh, the Slingers, I, they actually counter each other. Uh, so these Slingers will counter the Carpentums, but Carpentums also counter them. Um, and yeah, you're seeing these slingers die extremely quickly. Wow, look at that. And look at the the micro from Mista pulling back the low HP Carpentums. I don't, he didn't lose a single Carpentum, while uh, Eerie lost about 20 slingers there. So, uh, yeah, that was a very good micro right there from Mista. Just clean, cleaning up that army extremely quickly. Mista now building TC, very far forward. And Eerie trying to just hold on to his tournament life, at least the winner's bre his winner bracket life. But uh, this game is looking like it's about to come to an end here very shortly. And we do have three Rams moving in for Eerie, so they're going to take out this TC very quickly. But we have 20 Carpentums moving, to ch Carpentum champions at that. And I think, uh, did Eerie just delete those rams? I think I all died right away. And there's the GG. Alright, so Mista does take this series. Let me update the score. Mista takes this series 4-1, to one, and Mista will advance to the Grand Finals of the Zuda Zuda Classic Age of Empires Online Tournament. And uh, Eerie loses this series, so he's going to move to the loser's bracket. And he'll be able to continue to fight in the loser's bracket and get a chance to go to the grand finals and be able to rematch the missing in the grand finals. Um, so that's going to be it for this stream. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask in the chat. Um, this is a Jumpers Online. This game is free to play, so I'm sure one of the mods can post a link in the chat where you can download this game for free. Um, 
I definitely encourage you guys to give it a try. It's a very good, very good RTS game. So we're seeding, seed, we saw him miss the play very strongly here as a kind of undercover player. Not sure how often he plays the game, but he's been the best player ever for the entire history of Rage Humpers Online, really. And uh, just showing that he pretty much still is the best player. Uh, winning the series 4-1 to and uh, moving to the finals, grand finals of this tournament. So we'll see if, if anybody will be able to challenge him in the grand finals uh, a little more, more of a challenge. And if you guys have any last second questions, I'll stick around here for a few more minutes and then I'm about to get out of here and close the stream. Uh, thank you everybody for watching. Yes, uh, so they want me to explain the Sparta and token system. And sure, so uh, Sparta is region in Age of Empires Online where you play quick search games and uh, with this latest patch today they just finally got it working again so you can play quick search once again um, play 1v1s and there's 2v2s party or random I think that they said 2v2 party sadly is not working right now um, so you can do quick search and it's a lot of fun and all that um, and there's leaderboards but I think currently leaderboards aren't working so hopefully next patch they will be working and uh, they actually added something. You get rewards for playing PvP, uh, ranked PvP, which is champion mode. Uh, you get XP. You also get a new thing that they added: Spartan tokens, and uh, you get some coin also. Um, and uh, explain the Spartan tokens. So I think for reward, if you play a game, if you just play a game, you get 9,000 XP and one token. But if you win the game, you get four tokens. Plus, you get these rewards for just playing, and then you also get these rewards if you win 27,000 XP, 150 coin, and four more Spartan tokens. And I think when you get a. I forget, what do you even use the Spartan tokens for? Um, it was posted somewhere uh, in the announcements. Um, yeah, you use Spartan tokens, you can get items with them, and I think some other stuff. So I'm going to check and maybe explain it more. Um, so it's very cool that Quick Search is now working once again in this game. Can't wait for the leaderboard to start working. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to be it for this stream. Um, yep, that's going to be it. So thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you next time.